friends, today I'm going to share with you another video and my experience with another collision detection type, circle to rectangle. This type is broadly used in game development. I'll show you what type of games this might be used in. You'll see why the easiest and most obvious approach for this type doesn't work. And of course, we'll build a cool demo and we'll learn the most efficient way that I've found for this type so far. Before we start, I want to remind you that so far we've learned four different types of collision detection. And you can find all of them in the description to this video. Okay, now let's get started. First, let's take a look at these two shapes we're going to work with today. These are very common sprite shapes. A lot of obstacles in your game might have a rectangular shape as well as a circle shape. Same thing with your game characters. Another type of game where we can use it is one with a terrain map or other type of surface. Let's say you're building a golf game for and you'll have holds, obstacles, and different types of land where your golf ball is rolling. So on the way of the rolling ball, you want to check everything that happens on its path, right? One approach could be to divide your terrain into a lot of small squares and check for collision detection between the ball and each of the squares. So you got it, right? For these cases, you can use the collision detection type circle to rectangle in its algorithm. And at first glance, it may seem simple and easy. We already know how to check collision detection between two rectangles. We also know how to do it for two circles, so just do something in between. And this is kind of true. And let's see if it is indeed simple or if it requires some effort. Let's start coding to clarify it. First, let's just draw our two objects on the screen. Okay, now that we have them, let's move our circle and try to understand what would I need to measure to detect collision. It looks obvious that we need to measure the distance between the rectangle edge and compare it with the circle radius. So if this distance is bigger than the circle radius, collision doesn't happen. But from which side and to what point exactly do we have to measure this distance? Should we measure this distance? Or maybe this one, or this. It all depends on the position that they have at the current moment. So what algorithm do you have to use for this calculation? I bet that the first thoughts that come to your mind is easy peasy. The circle is like a dot, but with a radius. So we can do something like this.
I want to change the color of my shapes since I don't like these. At first glance, it might work. Look at the screen. But let me show you why it's not correct and why we need a more complex solution. Let's make our circle bigger and move it to the rectangle corner. You see, now it's clear. We detect collision here, but we should not. They don't touch each other. They don't have an intersection. Okay, how do you make it correct? First, let's get rid completely of this confusing trial collision detection function. We understood that this approach is wrong if you want to have good accuracy. Now let's look at our picture and try to understand what we really want to measure. We want to measure the distance between the circle center and the closest point of our rectangle edge. So the very first thing we can do is to identify how our circle is positioned against the rectangle. Then once we know, we can easily calculate the distance between the circle and the closest rectangle point. So let's do it in our code. First, we want to compare the circle x coordinates with the rectangle x coordinates. And if it's less than rectangle x, it means our circle is positioned on the left. If it's bigger than the rectangle's right edge, it means the circle is positioned on the right side of the rectangle. The same, it works the same way for the y coordinates. We simply want to understand the position of our circle according to our rectangle's position. And based on these results, we can identify the exact point on our rectangle edge that will be the closest to our circle. This is where we need, again, our knowledge about the Pythagorean theorem. To remind you how it works, you can check my other video, Collision Detection Type Point to Circle. Let's do it! This is how our collision detection function should look like. Let's check out how it works. As you can see, now it works perfectly. Okay friends, we're done for this collision detection type. I hope you learned a lot of new things and don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button if you like this video. Bye!